Salams and welcome to episode 3 of Playthings of Alien Forces. I'm Siddhant Dhani and with me in the studio, as always, or at least as the plan goes, is our sports editor, Leslie Xavier. Leslie, good to see you again. Yeah, How's you. it going? Good, going. Watched the match and... Matches? Yesterday was, yeah, of course, actually, multiple matches Super in Sunday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, India-Pakistan, uh, India versus Oman, Oman in the football. Yeah. And then, of course, a whole range of football games uh, across yeah, Europe that of people were also following, uh, from Manchester United, Liverpool to Marseille versus PSG to Real Madrid, Barcelona. Renewed interest uh, in PSG these days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, bit of an overload yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and while we are still nursing our hangovers and such, we thought it'd be a good time to. Uh, begin a conversation about some of the talking points that have emerged from all the action on the pitch uh, on that Sunday. Starting, of course, with the India-Pakistan game at the ICC T20 World Cup uh, being held in the UAE. Uh, where the first story or the big story that, that, uh, that emerged, of course, uh, Pakistan beat India quite convincingly by 10 wickets. Uh, not much of a contest, pretty one-sided game there. Uh, so, the big talking point from that game became what happened actually before the game even began. Where the Indian team decided to take a knee in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. Now, this has generated a lot of debate uh, on the internet with people jumping in uh, on different sides uh, of the discussion, of the conversation. Uh, one side saying this is purely performative uh, solidarity. It's just a performative gesture, uh, just for a photo op. Something that's being done uh, to sound right, because the West Indies, of course, mm -hmm. uh, where a number of black players are part of the team, uh, they, they did the same the previous day when they played their game. And it's the right thing to do in an international context. Uh, people like Michael Holding have been very vocal about uh, racism in sport, including in cricket, uh, and, and the wider context in which all of this is happening. Uh, where do you stand, Leslie, on, on this debate uh, in terms of how the Indian cricket team decided to come out with this message? A message that they've also said, by the way, was communicated to them by team management. Mm. So it's not that necessarily the players have had a chat about it in the dressing room or in their team hotel and decided that we have to do this. More a case of... BCCI situation. Yeah a top-down kind of thing and then they figured out how they wanted to do it and the Pakistan players also expressed their solidarity in some manner. So, uh, great to see the gestures and we've seen it across yeah. sport. But what's your take on the entire discussion? Uh, when I first saw, uh, I mean, uh, the openers, they knelt down in the middle, uh, KL Rahul and uh, Roy Sharma and I thought they were warming up because you don't expect this to happen from Indian, not all due respect to the gesture like you said, but uh, our players are a bunch of inert celebrities because they, frankly, they, probably they have, I mean, within them opinions about things that happen around, but they are not vocal about it at yeah. all. And this has, this is not just a, pro a problem with the current generation. It's been there right through, mm. right through history from from great superstars even, someone like Sachin Tendulkar, for instance. So, taking the knee and joining the uh, Black Lives Matter bandwagon because it's 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 a right thing to do. It's a great thing to do, and it's all it also ticks the box for the Indian team as a bunch of aware woke players who can stand for things that are, I mean, stand to point out things that are wrong and make a difference. Yeah. But there are many things that they could make a difference back at home, which they are silent about. In fact, they are silent about their own fraternity as well. First thing that came to my mind when I saw that was, and there is a connection, in fact, because India-Pakistan match, Muslim nation versus Hindu nation, that's that's the billing that happens. I mean, the under under building, so to speak. A lot of banter happens online as well about the, so those things. How Indian Muslims celebrate a Pakistan victory, blah, blah, blah. It goes on like that. And it happened yesterday as well on, on Twitter. Mm. So, when Wasim Jafar, a former India cricketer and a Renji Trophy a domestic cricket legend, mm. and uh, when he had a coaching assignment and he was treated badly by the, by the state association and the state team, 
uh, and insinuation was that he's a Muslim and he's selecting players who belong to his, his community. His community. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody stood up. The BCCI didn't take a stance. You mentioned that it's it's the, this gesture came from top down. Yeah. So BCCI as an institution is trying to portray itself as a very woke organization. Uh, woke organization. But when when it came to them taking a stance for something that is happening within its its realm, mm. they were silent about it. Mm. And Wasim Jafar has played with some of the legends who are very vocal on Twitter these days. Uh, someone like uh, Virendra Sehwag or uh, Sachin Tendulkar or BCCI president Saurabh Ganguly himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody, nobody. Not just on social media. In fact, when the games are on, a lot yeah. of these people are now in. Uh, commentary boxes exactly. and studios exactly. and giving their opinion on all, all sorts exactly. of things of which you would assume this is also a, a major part. So, so now the question, this this is a topic where which I have, I have written on, I have spoken about it as well. Last year when, when uh, our players were silent about COVID-19 lockdown post that, whatever that, uh, that happened, mm. uh, including the uh, migra I mean the movement of uh, I mean, walking off migrant labor labor force and how they struggle and all these things everybody was silent about it uh, that's that's probably the first time that uh, we presented this this case uh, how indian players are silent about such things and following that black lives matter movement swept across the world and our players were actively involved vocal, uh, involved about yeah. it so uh, it's it's it, i mean hypocritical to see what what we saw yesterday Especially in the context of, you, you mentioned of course, Basim Jafar, but also uh, one of the players on the team, Mohammed Shami, yeah. who came in for horrific online abuse, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of vile, bigoted uh, things being thrown at him, uh, be, being questioned on all, on all, all these very nationalistic ideas of uh, whatever it might be. With very little information or understanding of of things, I mean, uh, d doesn't this also have a massive impact on how the team itself functions and gets yeah, along? Exactly. So, uh, forget the team. I was watching the match, and the second over, uh, Shami came into ball, and uh, I. It's like I, it's not like I have a personal liking for Shami as such, uh, but I've. I've interacted with him, one of the few cr cricketers I've interacted with because he was there in one of the tours I covered long back. And uh, uh, I was hoping deep inside that he doesn't go for too many runs. Because ultimately when, when, when results come in, uh, if at all the big factor in, in that run chase is Shami's three overs, then you're, I mean, you can imagine what all he would be. I mean, going through online, yeah. and it affects the players, players' psyche, mind. It affects the maybe it won't affect the team dynamics. Maybe their setup is such that they would understand such matters. And Kohli being Kohli, and Kohli being the kind of leader that he is. Mm. Uh, of course, there were certain instances within match play which his leadership was questionable. But otherwise, as a leader of the team, I think Kohli. Is pretty clear about such things. Hmm. He may have some favorites, not favorites, but it's clearly not based on region or religion. Right. right. Okay. Fair enough. But we still would like to see some support for for Shami and 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 for uh, like a acknowledgement of of uh, the hypocrisy of all of exactly. this from exactly. that within happened. the establishment. That's, that that never happens, and that silence is 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 you know how how it is because. These people, the same people are vocal about retweeting certain things which the government or the establishment or the yeah. established norm, notions that is there in the country, they push forth and these people uh, copy paste that. Hmm. In fact, yesterday I came across a tweet uh, which mentioned six screenshots of bureaucrats, senior bureaucrats who had copy pasted a tweet which read that Pakistan are taking back the coin home to help their economy. So, I mean, <laughs> look at the bad taste in that, and these are government officials. Yeah, yeah. So it's a larger problem within the country, and Team India, as usual, is reflecting the country, I would say, mm. uh, as far as these things are concerned. And again, the country 
and the leaders take stands when things happen abroad. Mm. Yeah. Solidarity. Give their opinions. Yeah, open, give their opinions, yeah. all these things. The same thing happened yesterday with, with the Indian. Yeah, people. also I think the position of like moral high ground or moral superiority from which many of these comments come. Uh, that, you know, let us show you the way of uh, developing a society that is tolerant, that is accepting, that is diverse and all those things. Uh, but it, it's so superficial that it literally at one T20 cricket game, uh, everything kind of shows, <laughs> shows itself, itself in, a, in a second. So, it's actually black lives matter, what about Dalit life matter, what about Muslim lives matter, that those things are pertinent questions that happen in India. Yeah. And I mean, so, uh, as a, have our players stood, stood for that? No, because they are all cocooned. This bubble idea is, is, is been existing in Indian cricket or Indian sport. In general, for a while. For now. a while, yeah. Also, I think for me uh, personally, it put sharply into focus. Uh, you know, this little bit of grey area between sport and why, let's say, you and I perhaps look at sport and entertainment, which is uh, it. It now is, and if it is entertainment, and these people who are going out and doing it, no doubt they are very good at their jobs. Some of them are the best at their jobs in the world. Uh, but they are entertainers and therefore the status accorded to them, uh, the hero worship, the almost demigod status that they receive um, sh needs to also be very much questioned. And I think, um, uh, of course, we were watching the game on, on, on the app that shows it, the OTT platform. Uh, just on that app. So you can imagine how many more are watching on television uh, through the country. So, I, 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 there is some value in even performative uh, yeah. or symbolic uh, gestures, yeah. but, but things need to evolve beyond that as well. Yeah, things, uh, need, things need to be closer to home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which brings us to the next point, which is uh, closer to home, Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, how did they do on the field and what does that tell you about India's, uh, whether it's selection or... Uh, Decision making or uh, yeah, team composition. Uh, I would, I mean, Indian team composition. I would say that India missed a baller. We, I would have uh, probably I mean, loved to see a spinner in the mix. The Pakistan may add two spinners, and uh, it sort of east of uh, their captain's uh, choice about which ballers to ball because he could go for specialized ballers. He could push, keep, keep some. Save for the latter part of the innings. Yeah, you know, these things. Now, of course, he had the luxury of uh, bowling first, and they opted to. And uh, otherwise, looking at the Pakistan players, they always, every generation, they they had talented fast bowlers, they had talented batsmen, mm -hmm. and but every Pakistan team that we have seen over the years, of course, we we love the way <coughs> they play, but but there was also that. Uh, self detonating yeah nature you never know when they when they when they will lose sort of just, everything yeah. and then just implode explode yeah. uh, whichever way you look at it yeah. so yesterday's pakistan team <laughs> played like those australian teams from the 90s early 2000s mm. perfect mm. in all departments yeah, through the match we watched, and of, uh, of course the great start by Shaheen, great bowler himself, young though inexperienced, but it didn't show. Hmm. And he has this silly, I mean, very intriguing uh, statistics attached to him that invariably every third match, he, I mean, he takes a wicket in the first over. Mm. So he has played more than 60 T20 matches. He had he has taken wickets in 23, 24 matches, including yesterday 24 matches. So it, <laughs> I mean, so it's no surprise that KL Rahul, <laughs> but KL Rahul had no idea how he got out there. Mm. And Rahul is coming from a great IPL IPL season. He scored more than 600 runs, averaged more than 60. And highest score of 98. So, his selection in that uh, and to open India's innings, I, I would say going by form, that was that was a good selection. But uh, he just had no idea how to face, how to play someone like Shaheen. 
and so that makes us wonder you mentioned earlier about the entertainment quotient of of sport uh, ipl as a much more higher quotient than most of the most of the most of the sport <laughs> most of the tournaments in cricket in, in, i would say any sport in the world <laughs> yeah it's so, the biggest show so and uh, again multiple times we have had this discussion surrounding indian football and the isl where a closed league and the competitive nature of it and how 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 if there is nothing at stake will there be i mean that kind of intensity in the matches yeah. which we i mean which which is always there at the world cup matches or yeah. a bilateral series because countries are playing if not anything people are worried that they would come at your gate and yeah. burn things so yeah, and in this case of course it's a world cup so all the more reason exact and the opening match of the yeah. world cup a yeah. lot of things at stake of course the rivalry has at stake yeah. and all that and in that match despite having zero experience in the richest league in the world and all that you saw this pakistan players and you saw that they were professionals hmm. you saw the indian players of course they they were outplayed they it's not like they underperformed or yeah. anything like that they played yeah. decently yeah. but they were outplayed thoroughly through the match and pakistan came in with a with a game plan on how to face this batsman how which bowlers to use at what time hmm. and they just executed, executed it while india after putting runs on the board when the inning started i thought virat kohli was a little overwhelmed by the pressure mm. because he tried five different bowlers in the first five overs so mm. that's that defies logic uh, sporting logic that defies cricketing logic as well because one would like to believe that you give your bowler the confidence and a couple of overs at least of course it's t20 so you only have four the maximum a maximum of four overs for a bowler right but use them for two overs bhuvneshwar kumar experienced bowler can swing it he went for 10 runs in the opening over mm. so don't take him out the next over because 10 runs is nothing give him one more shot maybe is like is is one of your most experienced bowler he can he can turn it around in the next over but no he pulled out mm. and then sham uh, second over shami came in third over bumrah replaced bhuvneshwar fourth over Varun Chakravarty replaced spinner replaced uh, Shami and fifth over again mm. Bumrah came back in so it's uh, it's like he Virat Kohli presented all his bowlers to the Pakistan batsmen saying that these are our bowlers get used Decide, to them take get, your pick yeah get used to them and then after the finish <laughs> of the match and yeah, they yeah. did that duly and Virat Kohli wasn't helped by the fact that he, he didn't have a spin spin option yeah and also uh, adik pandya got he is a bowling option adik pandya got a shoulder injury so he didn't in ball in the mm. match so so that 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 worked against kohli that way so uh, indian team have, have to get back into Figure a lot things of, out a uh, lot of planning yeah. uh, playing 11 to start with also uh, kohli's calls need to be a little bit more especially pressure pressure situations and in mm. world cup it's it's always pressure situation that way yeah a little bit less reactionary and more less thought out more thought yeah. out yeah. and more planned out and yeah. that is where i guess ms dhoni's presence was supposed to help but i don't know yesterday's match we i thought that we were out of strategies so mm. it, it, right. it, I, i i i have to question what dhoni's role was in that dressing room etc for coming out and doing a photo op of uh, shaking hands with the pakistan players yeah yeah fair enough i think we'll uh, we'll wrap this part yeah. there because we've got couple of other uh, big enough stories to do and we're r- rapidly running out of time yeah. uh, but just yeah as a last word of course first game of the tournament for india as well as pakistan well done to pakistan for the victory uh, but uh, no, good reason to expect india to also go or enough uh, perhaps evidence to expect india to also go long uh, in the tournament at least and some of that perhaps uh, sort of value of playing so much t20 cricket will come out as the tournament gets along and some of this pressure is or whatever mm-hmm. how but important to see how the team will regroup uh, but also on pakistan and 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 the uh, taking the knee situation that we were talking about earlier how pakistan cricket have have been treated over the past right, right. few years and essentially uh, pariah in that mm-hmm. sense we've seen back to back new zealand and england pull out of tours with pakistan no one wants to really go to pakistan and play in that country of course uh, and an attitude of sort of it doesn't really matter because they are uh, small fry and and if it 
in some way keeps india happy then uh, even better exactly so 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 yeah so yeah we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on all of this obviously uh, leslie with you as the world cup also proceeds uh, well done on watching the game by the way uh, yeah <laughs> and we'll, <laughs> we'll move on now to uh, india versus oman at the asian football confederation under 23 qualifying championship also being held in the uae uh, where to me uh, a very very good win for india a 2-1 win over a, a very lively very fluid oman side that was expected from all corners to well get a good result in this game uh, india we were hoping would compete india we were hoping would get some goals but a win is definitely i mean it it uh, it's a exceptional start for ego's team match and for the boys who played last night yeah, it's a great victory and when i saw the result and uh, i missed the match and but uh, saw the result i followed some some live commentary as well so uh, it was it was surprising because uh, you saw a senior india side have a mediocre and i would call it a mediocre outing at at the saf championship, championship struggling against much lower ranked teams yeah and then uh, they came back no camp egosti match had a hastily arranged press conference in bangalore before heading out for this tournament and uh, frankly i just didn't give them any chance at all but surprise it is surprising so i uh, of course i you are the football guy so i would want to know what what were the factors that played out where uh, our, our men under 23 side they just they, took the game to and they took the game because they took a two goal lead as well so yeah. they, they, were, they they were playing attacking brand of football yeah. and uh, what is the change in dynamic here who oh, hard to say actually not also being on the ground to kind of understand very clearly uh, what some of those dynamics are makes it a bit more challenging but the one thing that did stand out is that a lot of the boys who are now in this under 23 squad are boys who have uh, experience of playing big tournaments somewhat not not a ton of experience but many of them uh, whether it's the captain suresh wangjam aniket jadhav who played rahul kp jackson singh uh, world cup players yeah, right and the same dheeraj in goal so they 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 began in a sense their careers by playing a fifa world cup yeah. and of course they are the first generation of indian footballers to do that right uh, i think in some ways perhaps it shows here that with something at stake against a bigger team mm-hmm. uh, they they have the mental strength uh, of course also some amount of pace physicality and technical ability to be able to execute those things uh, but also they have the mental strength to go out without uh, fear without with giving the opponent the respect they deserve but not too much respect and what i was really impressed by was how the midfield kind of came together to make those spaces to fight for uh, balls and rahim ali had a cracker mm-hmm. i mean uh, penalty converted with great confidence i think uh, he had a role to play in winning of the penalty as well and he had an assist, assist, assist uh, yeah. for uh, the second goal scored by vikram pratap singh uh, super performance i would say from uh, these boys what i can't say much on how it happened but uh, very happy that it did because for a long time we've been looking for good results of course we celebrated the saf win but like you said yeah uh, it was a very average show average show and yeah. uh, of course again we are expected to win over there yeah. but but saf was an important tournament because we are even in the show we had a discussion of whether steamar should have taken the and the 23 squad there with with the mix of a couple of seniors mm. uh, and so that they can then again translate that experience into into the qualifiers here and mm. then next year the championship itself as well as uh, the asian games yeah. because under 23 squad would be playing i mean if at all Maybe. if at all india yeah. sent them there but i believe that they should i mean i feel that they should be sending, sending no them. i think so i think it will happen uh, i think if they are invited to participate in the tournament yeah. they will yeah. now go i think everyone realizes there's enough interest in it and we we talked about this quite often you know with uh, some of the guests who are regulars on our uh, sister show 420 grams where we talk basically about indian football uh, whether it's former india captain renedi singh 
or Baichung Bhutia, they've said that part of the process needs to be, of course, the club structure needs to be fixed so that these, these kids are getting enough game time uh, to be able to have the same level of decision making yeah. while on the pitch as everyone else does. Uh, but also a concurrent focus on age group level football mm -hmm. across, you know, because that's where I think we can have an impact. Uh, things change dramatically at yeah. the senior level. And for countries that have a wider talent pool and mm -hmm. things like that, you'll find that some under 23 players are so good. Look at Almoez Ali, for example, yeah. from Qatar, right? Uh, he, he is uh, considered to be one of the top strikers in Asia, mm -hmm. uh, regular with their senior team. Now, it's highly unlikely to me that he'll be even in the squad for an under-23 qualifying tournament. Yeah. He may be, I may be wrong, I'm just, I'm just using it as a uh, representative example. Right, so, so a lot of these, uh, the young boys in the more developed Asian countries as far in, from a footballing sense, have already moved on to full-time senior team duty. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, all the age group, all the other teams are also experimenting a bit, mm -hmm. evaluating their players as a pipeline to their own yeah. senior national teams. So, it allows a bit more openness in play, uh, more mistakes are made, obviously. And yesterday, at least on the day, India capitalised, I, I was... Uh, very, very happy to see how the defensive unit performed, mm. particularly. Uh, because that's been something that's been a massive challenge. For, for the senior side as for, well. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and it doesn't necessarily translate, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Mm -hmm. But for what it was, uh, it was pretty good. And this match time for them, again, we are, we are, so how, I didn't get into the part where uh, I wanted to check with you, how many of these players feature in the SAF Championship and how many of these players are regular? Because for me, that is an important factor. I said, granted, they had their World Cup experience, yeah. granted, they, have, they were part of the Arrows system at yeah. some point, so yeah. match time yeah. was there. Yeah. And then, so... You reached a certain level at the under-17 level, level which is higher than what the country has seen so far yeah. because of the experience, because of the camp structure they got, the league exp exposure they got at the young stage. After that, to bridge that gap with within the Indian t Indian standards takes a lot yeah. as well. So forget we are we are talk, we are aspiring or we are dreaming of taking that standard to a higher level. But these for these youngsters to bridge and be a regular in the national team itself takes a lot. Yep. And for that to happen, they need see, uh, a match experience. And I believe they get limited time in the ISL because of the presence of Indian seniors who also have have to fight, especially in certain key positions. They have to fight with the foreigners. In fact, it's a no fight also because mm. foreigners are picked up. Yeah. So, so how do you, how do we beat that that kind of a deficit? Because only then would 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 a systematic improvement, increment in standard will happen at the age group level, and then that would show in the seniors. Yeah, I mean, I, it's something that we will talk about at length. I think uh, on four twenty grams. But just to very quickly answer your question, I think time and and consistent push is the only way, uh, and so that's that's pretty much it. Or a, or I mean, a system, I, mean, I don't know whether one of our, maybe Chetri suggested this in our show maybe, uh, about, a, about a B team competition. Yeah, I, all those things are in the works. Yeah. I mean, there are many challenges if we start going, uh, the reason I'm not getting into it is because if yeah. we go down this road, then we'll start a conversation about the entire footballing structure where of okay. course many changes, many are, changes required. are required. Yeah. Uh, yes. And it's something that we do uh, sort of do repeatedly yeah. so so <laughs> i know but i do want to encourage those of you who are watching and are interested to uh, figure out more about this because not just us but people who have been in the system their entire lives have been on our show so you can check that out on youtube as well uh, 420 grams is the name of the channel uh, several conversations there on the system and the things that uh, that are needed to uh, you know like Leslie was saying, bridge some of these gaps between us and uh, the footballing north, well, as it were. <laughs> yeah. And finally, Leslie, uh, on the uh, context of because we are, again, I'm going to keep saying this again and again, <laughs> playthings of alien forces. What's happening at the Australian Open and how is it that it seems some leaked emails indicating that there might be a U-turn on the vaccination policy uh, where international players, it had earlier been said in, in quite uh, quite sort of harsh, not harsh, but very straightforward words by Australia's immigration minister, 
that international players coming in for the Australian Open will have to be uh, fully vaccinated. Uh, an indication that there's a change on that uh, policy decision and that, uh, in fact, unvaccinated players or players who do not want to declare their vaccination status will be able to come to Australia to participate in the tournament with a 14-day quarantine. quarantine. So, what brings about, other than Novak Djokovic, uh, this change in uh, sort of what was a clear stand now is a lot more... Uh, ambiguous. I think uh, it, it was not just, I mean, yeah, of course, Novak Djokovic, uh, Djokovic's star power is there and it's also, uh, I think the player council was involved uh, in, in, in these discussions. The leaked email was, in fact, uh, an email correspondence between WTA TA and the player council. So, uh, there must have been some push from the players union as such also because uh, it's the belief is that vaccination is a personal call and it shouldn't be forced upon. And of course, in the last uh, 18 months or so, tournaments have been staged and uh, vaccination, for instance, even uh, grant big event like the Tokyo Olympics, scale-wise as well. Mm. There was no uh, uh, clear rule that unvaccinated at least won't be allowed into the system. So, uh, the idea is that the quarantine... Uh, rules would negate the possibility of, uh, I mean, if you're getting into a bubble and if you're doing a 14-day quarantine and post that you are within that bubble, mm. that would negate uh, the risk, I mean, yeah. some yeah. some percentage of the yeah. risk that, that things would escalate into an infection or a cluster spread or whatever. Mm. Having said that, uh, Australian Open would be a open event. Mm. That way, because the country apparently is touching 90% vaccination status. So, mm. uh, like the Cricket World Cup that is happening, also Cloud are being allowed in Dubai. Mm. And Dubai has eased off a lot of, I mean, UAE has eased off a lot of restrictions, mm. uh, COVID restrictions, because vaccination has reached a certain sa uh, saturation point, so to speak. Uh, same thing will happen in, uh, in Australia. So, uh, it's not like the players won't be exposed. So, the, what the vaccination is supposed to do is keep yourself from remote chances of infection as well because it's an air, I mean in that sense it's a respiratory disease and mm. you I mean you are within a crowded space yep. and you're playing yep. and so unvaccinated players go in with, the, with, with that kind of a risk because the bubble is changed now bubble is not closed bubble where you are so crowd is only watching it on TV and only the people who are within that bubble are involved in the stadium, not anymore. It's, yep. a, it's an open event, so mm. there is always a risk. So their initial stance was made based on Australian government taking that decision based on the risks that are involved. Now easing off whatever the pressures are, maybe player, maybe sponsor. And it's, it's, it, has, it, is, it is a tricky call because if at all, a cluster spread happens within or a spread happens inside. Hmm. Uh, lots of, lots of, lot, lots lot of, of challenges. Lot of challenges. Yeah. Uh, the tournament itself has a stake. The people who are involved in the tournament, yeah. the staff, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the workers, the kids. I don't know. I don't exactly know uh, what the vaccination policy of, of Australia is as far as under 18 uh, kids are concerned mm. and all the ball boys and support staff around the court would be I think things are being opened up but yeah, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. we'll check on that Please. yeah but it's an important point that you brought up whether it's pressure from players or from sponsors or from both mm -hmm. because the argument is that players bring sponsors and then sponsor yeah. money drives everything else so uh, that, that that's also why the link back to our uh, show a show name yeah uh, because at the end of the day the, the fact is that there for a lot of people there's a lot of money riding on this and I think that is uh, from the tennis perspective, at least, that is uh, a dominant perspective. And also, uh, the, sp uh, from, the yeah. from the national perspective, I guess it's challenging because people looking at public health issues, mm -hmm. Australia now, I mean, I personally have a, a ton of uh, yeah. very close family there. And they have had to endure over the past two years a very, very hard, very strict lockdown where even 
travel between two states for example sydney uh, where i have some family and melbourne where the um, the australian open oh, takes place right. between the states of victoria and new south wales tra travel was uh, closed the borders were shut uh, people have suffered tremendously through these lockdowns because of all of the day to day life and livelihood issues that it's brought up and so for all of these people to have gone through this and then to see these guys who all in any case because of their economic status and and then their social status uh, occupy bubbles come in and uh, take everything for 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 sort of granted in a sense and uh, also perhaps put under some kind of threat i'm not saying that everything will collapse because of 5 or 10 or 20 even 100 players but but they are putting what has been taken a lot of effort to maintain from a public perspective uh, in some kind of jeopardy uh, yeah but uh, it's an interesting uh, email leak where uh, uh, you say the players who are unvaccinated or undeclared players they can come in and do 14 day quarantine which in itself is a deterrent because you were losing hard quarantine they are talking about it's not like they could train mm. so players who come in they are going off boil clear this this issue had happened earlier where some of some players were treated prefer uh, with preference uh, during the australian open itself yeah. uh, earlier last, this year last yeah, last, uh, last australian open so mm. and some players couldn't train at all and so so I don't know. Uh, now, I mean, it's a it's a, it's a smart chess game of sorts because mm -hmm. pressure came in, so you have to ease off the rule. Okay, we are easing off the rule, but this is our state's rule. And yeah, like you mentioned, it's the decision is not from the Australian government. The Victoria state government has to take this decision. Yeah. Whether this right. should be allowed. So, right. and their rule is pretty clear: fourteen day. If you're coming from abroad, fourteen day hard quarantine. So, so uh, ultimately, at the at the Uh, i mean application level i think all this will be negated all these games will be negated because players who come in they they lose out mm. I mean, so if if you want to come in and be a serious i mean be on peak for the tournament then you better vaccinated and come that's the message that the australian government is authorities are sending out yeah. so fair enough and hopefully that message is coming across loud and clear at a time when also we are talking about having at least reached a global milestone of a billion uh, vaccine doses having been administered and all so if billions of people have to go through this i think there is a, a strong argument to be made for athletes for sports people across the spectrum whether it's our cricket stars or someone else's uh, tennis stars to become more a part of the world in which they uh, inhabit and and uh, perhaps uh, you know view all of these matters is not purely in the context of individual liberty and freedom of choice but also in the wider context of how uh, it impacts uh, perception it impacts public policy and and all of these things uh, let's see we'll obviously follow up on this uh, with you as things develop there's of course still i think some time before the australian opens actually played yeah, yeah. Uh, so so it's uh, it'll take some time for all this to be ironed out but we will wrap it at this uh, it's been a long show and it's been uh, i think uh, quite a good chat lizzy thanks for bringing the energy and and all of your perspective we'll be back with uh, with uh, the next episode of this show next week same time same place meanwhile uh, check out all of the other stories we're doing on uh, newsclick.in you can visit our website follow us on youtube and other social media channels uh, and we will see you on monday uh, next week Until then stay safe goodbye